Hi, my name is Ellen and I have the great pleasure of being one of the staff people joining the 2011 Students on Ice Antarctica um, expedition. Uh, one of the things I do in my life is I work as an environmental consultant and writer. And I have the great pleasure because I write children's books of often talking to children and scientists about their feelings about the environment and about climate change. One of the things that's become very apparent in both of those groups is a feeling of being really worried, often feeling hopeless, often feeling discouraged or like there's no point, um, that the problem is just way too big for any individual to do anything about. And the result of that is either sometimes just shutting down and saying I've had enough, I don't want to hear about it, or feeling immobilized by a lack of ability of knowing what to do. So I've kind of made it a bit of a personal um, commitment in my life to try to talk to scientists and people of all different professions and backgrounds about where they find hope, what makes them feel hopeful. And one of the people I had the pleasure of meeting on this expedition is Ole. Ole is a um, Swedish Antarctic expedition explorer, uh, writer, person who loves Antarctica. And when I asked him about hope, he told me this beautiful story, which I will share with you. Uh, he told me that he fell in love with Antarctica years before he ever had the pleasure of visiting it. He just fell in love. It just happened. And because he was in love, he decided he would learn everything he could about it. So he spent years interviewing people who had been to Antarctica, reading old logs of polar ex uh, expedition people, um, looking at the science of it, and he compiled a wonderful book working alongside a colleague of his who is a, a great photographer. A part of his ambition, of course, was that by doing the book he would have the chance to see the place he loved, and he came here and fell even more deeply in love. He kept an active interest in this place, a place that unlike any other place on the planet, you do not, you watching this, do not need a passport to visit because it is not owned by any country. Anyone on earth can come here and visit. It's open to all of us. He came, he's kept track of it, he's kept an ear with his um, politicians in his home country of Sweden. And when he learned that there was consideration of removing minerals from Antarctica, consideration of whether that should be allowed or not, he went to his environment minister and said, you know, how are we feeling about this in Sweden? And they said, well, you know, the US and the UK are very pro the idea of opening up mineral exploration. So we think we're going to take a regulatory approach to kind of slow them down. And Ole thought for a moment and he said, well, I have perhaps another suggestion you might want to consider, which would be, what if we just did nothing? What if we just took a little bit of time and propose that we do nothing, which in international environmental policy is known as a moratorium. You just decide no one will take any action and we'll have some time to think about it. Some of you may be very familiar with a rather famous uh, case in international environmental policy where moratoriums have been used and that's with whaling. The International Whaling Commission started with a moratorium when whales became commercially extinct many, many decades ago. And they said, we'll just not fish until whales get back to the numbers where it's, uh, there's enough of them that we can go out and hunt them so that we can fish them again. Well, of course, in those ensuing decades, something happened. A lot of people fell in love. A lot of people fell in love with whales. And now the International Whaling Commission is as much a conservation commission as it is uh, a commission set with an interest in whaling. So, because Ollie fell in love, he suggested a moratorium. The moratorium, in fact, is what the decision was taken. And that means that we all have the chance, we all have the time, we all have the ability to fall in love and keep this place like this. Thank you.